Okay. Um, difficult weekend for all. Uh, the, the, again, it's like war on terror 2. Point. Oh, we've seen the, the various different people on TV basically saying that this is, you know, this is 9-11 for Israel. And we, we've seen the comparisons in regards to the death toll and population. And, you know, what a big deal this is for them in a myriad of different levels. Um, again, it was a major uh, intelligence failure. Uh, by the Israeli government. Also, we here in the United States, which I, I again, I, I, I don't, I, I'm kind of out of a loss of how they didn't, in essence, see this coming. Um, when long ago we were talking about, uh, you know, the, the advances that were being made between Israel and Saudi Arabia and, and the possibility that these two countries were going to recognize one another and normal ties uh, we're going to transpire. And then when you have that happen, that's almost like a domino effect throughout the rest uh, of that region outside, of course, of Iran. Now, you're in Iran's position um, and Iran's proxies, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, um, Syria, um, and also obviously Hamas. Uh, there in the Gaza Strip, um, that's bad for business. That is very bad for business. That, that's the last thing in the world uh, that they want to have happen. And you can take a look at this throughout history. I was uh, reminded of this um, going back to 2000 when Bill Clinton bought uh, uh, Yasser Arafat and, and Ehud Barak to Camp David, where they tried to put together a deal. And, and there was no deal to be had simply because what in the what in the world what in the world would Arafat do if he actually got I think they gave him a ton of what he wanted it wasn't everything but they gave him a ton well what the hell is Arafat gonna do you got you got to start running at that point in time you have to start running a country you, you got you got to pick up the garbage and you gotta you know deal with the water and electricity and all that stuff that Israel had been dealing with at that point in time and Israel had gotten out of Gaza completely. Uh, it was 2005, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, ever since then, we're, you know, the, 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 uh, well, the, the leftist conventionalism out there, as they call the Gaza Strip, which is one of the most, uh, heavily, uh, populated areas as far as concentration is concerned. Um, I heard this past week and compare it to the size of Omaha, Nebraska. There's two million people that are living there. And uh, again, Hamas runs it. Um, Hamas runs this. Uh, from what we're hearing, the people in Gaza are none too happy with Hamas. Um, you don't defy uh, Hamas. If you do, you're going to be eliminated. So um, these advances are being made with Israel and, and Saudi Arabia. They can't have that happen. They, they simply cannot have that happen. The, the fund transfer, the money transfers between Saudi Arabia, I'm not sure how much Saudi Arabia sends on a monthly basis to Hamas. I know um, uh, Qatar sends it close to $30 million a month. Um, keeps business going. But without that money flowing, I, again, Hamas is out of business. It's over. It's over. So this is why this is happening right now. And again, we'll get into the um, Yom Kippur War uh, a little bit later on. I'm going to do a myriad of podcasts uh, today on this topic. But again, you're, we're at the anniversary of that 50 year anniversary. 50 year anniversary, Yom Kippur War. Um, and again, I think that this is one of the reasons why that this is happening now. Um, what's going to happen next? Well, we shall see. Um, again, I'm calling this war on terror 2.0. Um, I, I hope, I hope that the Israelis learn from our mistakes and our war on terror that then still being conducted. Um, the fact that, um, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to occupy uh, this area. You're not going to be able to, to change um, the hearts and minds of these people 
on your own. You, you just, you just can't do it. You just can't do it. I mean, we, we tried that. George W. Bush and his grandiose vision, you know, it's going up there on a State of the Union address. Everybody's yearning for freedom and everybody wants this and everybody wants to be just like America. No, they don't. No, George, they, they, they don't. A lot do. A lot do. But, but not everybody. And again, um, stepping in and trying to occupy this for any extended period of time is a, um, something you don't want to have happen. Again, whether or not you want to try to get the Egyptians, the Jordanians, the Saudis to step in and to try to take control of this area, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. I don't, you know, again, <laughs> outside of sending money on a regular basis, they don't really do much for that area either. But anyway, we're going to, today, we're going to do a myriad of different podcasts on topics and, and areas uh, with this that I find important. We're going to talk about uh, financial markets react and oil factor, about Americans being killed and captured, um, global fallout. Uh, and we're going to continue to cover this. But again, it's an important thing. You got to, you have to study your history when it comes to these things. You know, the whole concept history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. Um, most certainly is going to hold true in this case as well. Watchdog on wallstreet.com.